The PCAK staff have a number of things to share with you regarding Child Abuse Prevention Month. As, as uh, you can expect, things are going to be different again this year. Uh, we had no idea that last year when things were different, that things would still be different a year later. But uh, the reality of the situation is we can't necessarily plan for doing some of our public events and things that we had hoped to do. So we are uh, pivoting as quickly as we can and um, are excited to, to share some ideas with you. Um, as we go through our slides, if you have any questions, if you could type them in the chat box, which you should see at the bottom of your screen, we will monitor those questions throughout our meeting. And then we've allowed time at the end of our meeting to respond to all those questions, or at least as many as we can get to. So on behalf of all of us at Prevent Child Abuse Kentucky, thank you for joining us. And I will turn it over to Emily. Hi everyone, my name is Emily. Um, as Jill said, we're so happy to have each and every one of you here. Um, thank you so much for your interest in joining our mission of preventing the abuse and neglect of Kentucky's children through advocacy, awareness, education, and training. Um, we really are so privileged to have so many great partners across the state um, helping us to accomplish our vision of building a better Kentucky by shaping our future leaders and their families to ensure Kentucky's children go up in safe, healthy environments. Um, so again, thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to pass it back over to Jill so she can talk a little bit about pinwheels and prevention um, and the kickoff at the Capitol. Great, thanks, Emily. As I think or, or hope most of you know, traditionally we have held a kickoff at the Capitol uh, the last, oh gosh, probably five or six years, we've planted pinwheels in what is referred to as the English garden in front of the Capitol. We've been fortunate to have the governor and attorney general and other dignitaries and legislators join us. This year, uh, we are honestly not sure what's going to happen. We have a request into the governor. We hope that he will be able to join us. But at minimum, our board has made the decision to not have that planting be a public event. So we are um, hopeful that our staff can be there planting. Um, like I said, we do have a request in. For those of you who may not know, you have to request usage of the Capitol through historic properties. So that request is pending. If we are able to plant, uh, the request is for April 1st, which um, I know that we will be talking about Wear Blue Day here later on in our uh, meeting. So we hope that the planting would then coincide with Wear Blue Day. But um, so our board has approved uh, this statement regarding the planting. It is posted on our website. And we will just kind of keep everybody posted in terms of, um, you know, what that planting looks like. And um, hopefully we will be able to have the, the governor and some folks join us recognizing social distancing and everything that's kind of uh, going on in our world right now. But we did want to let you know, we our hope and our plan is to still do that planting, but it will not be public. And with that, um, if we can go to the next slide. One of the things that we are uh, thrilled about, for those of you who were able to join us for our Kids Are Worth It conference, um, the DCBS commissioner joined us for a fireside chat, which was very well received. Lots of questions about DCBS priorities, um, lots of questions about what's going on and how can uh, community partners and advocates <clears throat> help. We are thrilled that the commissioner has agreed to do another fireside chat with us in April. Um, again, we have that um, she, she has agreed to do that, but we don't have the specific day yet. We are looking at probably a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. I know that that really narrows it down. Um, 
but we and it'll probably be in the neighborhood of 90 minutes it will be a free event so when we do have that date we will make sure that we notify everyone and we'll post it on our website and on social media and send it out to all of our partners so we encourage you to participate and hear what is going on with dcbs and how we can continue to be good advocates for our children and with that, I will turn it over to Dom. Good morning, I'm Dominique Thomas, um, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about our community scavenger hunt that we're gonna be having during the month of April. So we had a, a lot of great response from the activity calendars that we've had during the holiday. Um, and we really just wanna keep the community engaged. So we thought about having um, a scavenger hunt where you can, um, this will promote families locating and identifying resources that are within their communities and on our uh, PCAK website. Um, and there's other resources that our partners in prevention have have. So um, in, during the month of April, we're going to be posting um, different things that you'll uh, have to look for either within your community or on our website or on our partners' websites or um, uh, just finding resources that are, are, are uh, available to you. So if you can locate these uh, resources um, for every what you'll do is you'll take pictures of different things or you'll um, when you locate things on the website you may take a screenshot of that and you'll put it in a file and so at the end of the month um, you can submit those to either our website um, or you can submit those uh, via social media and we have the hashtag there which is uh, CAPM scav hunt 21 so that's CAPM scav hunt 21 and we're going to post this um, you know during the month of March leading up to child abuse prevention month just to get you all ready for it but during the month you'll 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 post your pictures and so if um, as a family you turn in uh, 15 of the 34 so there's about 34 different things that you'll be able to um, to find or to locate so if you do 15 of those about half of them then your name will go in um, to kind of a hat uh, one time um, 20 if you can find 20 of the items then it'll go in twice and you see there if you find all of them three times we also have our internet uh, safety online training um, that is available as well that if your uh, family completes that training that it'll go in an additional time. So if you uh, locate all of the items on the list and um, are able to uh, take the training as well, then your name could potentially go into the pot four times. And so from those uh, from those names in the pot, you'll you see here that we have our first place winner will get a hundred dollar a visa gift card, second place, we have $50 Visa gift card and then uh, three additional $25 Visa gift cards. Um, we're just wanting to keep people engaged and to let them know that these resources are available to them and to, to show folks how to locate the resources on um, our website and on our partners' websites as well. So um, this is just another way for us to, to keep folks engaged and we're just really excited about it. Dom, can I also jump in for those of you who um, may be wondering like, okay, what's what's on the scavenger hunt. It's things that can be found no matter if you're in Somerset or Pikeville, um, Fort Knox. So things like, um, you know, see, I have the list here. We've got, uh, there's, you know, finding your local library or locating where the fire department is, um, locating, um, downloading the uh, some of our tip sheets that we have available on our website so it'll you know kind of guide you through uh, locating the different resources on PCAK's website um, finding a park that's nearby so that you you know know kind of what's in your community so like uh, Jill was saying these are things that are available in every community thank you and I think that Olivia is going to be talking about our home kit planting. Hi, good morning, everyone. So I'm going to talk about home kits and, you know, what a great way to raise awareness and strengthen families and ed educate our children by purchasing a home kit. So I'm super excited to talk about it with you all today. Um, these home kits, one thing is you're going to get more pinwheels this year. So last year there were 10 and this year you get 15. So it can make your display um, a lot more beautiful when you're talking about and um, preventing child abuse. Um, in the month of April. Also, this is a great thing to have as a way to support prevention together while we're maintaining physical distancing. So 
Um, that is kind of like my little marketing strategy when I'm, I'm telling people that I know is like, hey, get this kit. You know, we're all at home and we're buckled down. So get this. It's a fun activity. It's a great way to talk about prevention. Um, and it's got some great resources inside this home kit. Um, a lot of them, you know, to do with kids that you have in your home or kids that are nearby is one way to look at it as well. Um, we've got those bookmarks with the flower seeds, I think would be great. We've got the cookie cutters in there. We bake some cookies on these cold days like today with the snow. Um, a couple of my favorites in the kit that I think that will are very would be very popular um, with our kids right now with everything that's going on are those warm fuzzies and those coupon books. And I saw a warm fuzzy and you're probably like, what is a warm fuzzy? So a warm fuzzy is this. They are messages to share with, with children. They're discussion starters and they have little personalized notes in there. <clears throat> so an example of those that's already been created for you is you make me smile. And so we all need that to, to um, connect with our kids and let them know, hey, you make me smile. But we also have um, some, some starters, some discussion starters in there for you to, to fill out. And one of my favorites looking throughout that warm fuzzy book is, you are special to me because. So these are great um, ways to connect with our kids. And we also have those coupon books. And I remember getting those when I was younger from my family, a coupon book and, and looking in, in there. Um, one of a popular one I think right now would be is, hey, here's a coupon and I'll help you clean up your room. So what about starting a kid's day off at breakfast with a coupon that says that? So um, again, there's some great things in this home kit. Uh, we also have a nice little tip sheet in there to help you um, promote and talk about child abuse. Within the main headings on that tip sheet is, you know, how, how can we raise awareness? The ways that you can talk to your kids and, and the community. I mean, again, how do we talk to our children about preventing child abuse? How can we openly and freely talk about body safety? And then what, how can we talk to our children about preventing child abuse in the community? And we give some suggestions in that sheet. So, um, it is a super great home kit to purchase and get. We don't necessarily have a date for it, but what I would like to say is just make sure you're promoting your home kit throughout the whole month of April. Um, would love to drive through the neighborhoods and around our communities to see these pinwheels and just some fun ways to plant your pinwheels. You know, don't forget to use that top stick so they're good and sturdy in the ground, but put them in your fire pots, just buy them in your windows. Um, however, um, another fun way is, so I was talking to my daughter about the home kit and what's in it. And she was like, oh, we can make a pinwheel wreath and hang it on the door. And that kind of leads with, you know, that little quote that I have on, on the slide today is shining in the sun. The pinwheel is reflective of the bright futures all children deserve. So purchase those home kits and, um, spread the word for PCAK. Right, and I'm going to be talking about Wear Blue Day, um, and so this year Wear Blue Day is going to be on April 1st, and that's Thursday. Um, so we are asking that everybody wear blue on April the 1st. Uh, we've got a few ways that we're promoting Wear Blue Day this year. We're going to have our annual photo contest. So on Wear Blue Day, we want you all to take your photos. Um, we we receive all different kinds, whether it's a group photo, it's an individual photo, it's photos of different, um, you know, smaller pinwheel planting. So, uh, you know, with folks in it that all have blue on. So um, we really want lots and lots of pictures uh, for April 1st, Wear Blue Day. We're going to have a photo contest. And so the winner of that contest will be um, will be featured, uh, the photos will be featured on the PCAK website. Um, they also receive a gift card. And then we also uh, will provide uh, the Child Abuse Prevention Month, um, either the home kit or the community kit, uh, depending upon whether it's individual or an uh, agency or an organization that, um, that will win the photo contest because the uh, community kits will have, um, you know, 
more items in there that are uh, more for the organization than the smaller home kits. Um, we're also going to have, again, the uh, printable sign. Um, we did have a printable sign last year as well um, that you can hold up and it says, I'm wearing blue for child abuse prevention. Um, so it's an easy way to, to really show that, you know, not only do you have the blue one, but you're letting people know why you're wearing blue. Um, so we will have those available uh, for print. Uh, it'll be a, you'll be able to download it from our website. We also want to remind you all that we have the Heart for Prevention t-shirts, and those are still available uh, for sale. And the proceeds from the Heart for Prevention t-shirts, those go directly to the basic needs requests of uh, the families that are served through our parent education program. So uh, Prevent Child Abuse Kentucky, we um, uh, work with 17 mm -hmm. agencies across the state that serve, that provide parent education um, in their communities. So those families have uh, needs throughout, just as all of us do throughout this uh, pandemic and the changes that we've all had through this year. So they have requests for these basic needs and we're uh, happy to say that we've been able to provide them um, with some funds in order to satisfy some of those needs. Um, but we still have those t-shirts available and it's a, a good way to not only wear blue on a wear blue day, but also to, to help with, with a good cause. Also want to point out that we still have lapel pins available as well that, you know, you uh, are you on a Zoom call or, um, you know, you have any kind of meeting that you have scheduled. It's an easy way just to, to wear your lapel pin and uh, show your support for child abuse prevention. Um, you can wear that. We definitely want to see them on Wear Blue Day, but wear it throughout the month of April and really just year round to show your support and uh, bring awareness to child abuse prevention. Can't say enough that, you know, sometimes, you know, how many people will ask, you know, hey, what's that pinwheel for? Just by seeing it on your um, on your lapel, so um, definitely uh, we have these available as well. So uh, wear uh, it's, it's, so wear your uh, lapel pins. Um, we also uh, had an idea that maybe you know since we're all working from home, that it may be um, a good idea to host a wear blue kind of dress dress up day or a dress down day um, uh, from you know, from your home. So whereas sometimes you may, you know, have to dress up, maybe you'll wear jeans and just a blue shirt on, um, on wear blue day and, you know, for your coworkers and it may be a way to, to bring awareness to, uh, child abuse prevention while also just engaging, um, individuals that you work with. And also want to mention that we're, um, we want to have a special project with our partners this year, um, just to really show, um, how many partners that we have across the state. We have more than, um, 238 partners statewide. So this year we really want to engage each one of our partners and have a picture of some sort from our partners that we can post on our website to show um, all of our partners engaged in child abuse prevention because you know that everybody is doing a lot of work across the state and we just really want to show um, who our partners are and we thought that this would be a unique way um, during child abuse prevention month and in conjunction with Wear Blue Day um, to show our partners wearing blue in solidarity to bring away awareness of child abuse prevention. So again, April 1st this year is Wear Blue Day. We're going to um, be uh, look for posts uh, to be coming up on social media um, in at the end of uh, March, just to remind you uh, of the things that are coming up. But Wear Blue Day, April the 1st. All right. So let's talk about trainings. Um, of course, we do lots of trainings throughout um, the year with um, in the training department. But, you know, thanks to funding from WellCare, we'll be hosting a series of trainings through the month of April. So a big thank you to them. And so be on the lookout for those where uh, the training team is currently um, discussing and, and talking about what we're gonna be doing. So be, be looking for those and you will be able to find those, you know, on our training mm. page and, and social media as well. If you um, need someone to talk about awareness and prevent, uh, prevention, you know, of course, reach out to PCAK staff and also our board member, members. Um, we're all available to, to be there to help with and talk about prevention. Um, another thing in, in training that I'd like to talk about today is um, if you're not aware, we do have our online internet safety training that has been a big hit and it's been a great prevention tool for families and our partners and just anyone to learn more about um, ITK and, and safety and things with, with our children. 
yeah. we do offer CEUs. It's three modules and you can take it at your own pace. So I encourage you to, to take it. If you haven't, check it out and, and spread the word um, on that. And again, it's part of our scavenger hunt. So we're super excited. Get a double whammy there for that. Um, we are also working on another online module. Um, we're in the beginning phase of those edits. And if you recall, or if you weren't aware, we did two trainings on from report to report. <clears throat> and it was raised during COVID-19, um, knowing how to report and what to look for during this pandemic. And it was a great partnership that we had with Child Health and Family Services um, and our presenters were from the Child Protection Branch. So um, it was an amazing training. We had a, a great turnout. But with moving forward, we um, have talked to them and they have decided and given us permission to get this training online for everyone to be able to take. And um, again, we will offer CEUs for that. So we are super excited um, here at PCAK about that new, new training. Some other things that's going on in training with PCAK is um, <clears throat> we are working on a training brochure um, just to kind of promote our trainings, a, a calendar of events so you know what to look for. We'll have some dates and if there's any costs associated with it. So be on the lookout for that. That just helps us all better plan. So I'm um, excited to be, to be talking about that. But in the meantime, always make sure you check out our training page and I've got the the link there so you can do that. And if you have questions um, about training or topics or want us to do anything for you, please contact me, Olivia Thompson, and my email is on the slide and, or you can also give us a call. So super excited to see what um, the training has in store for, for Capham in April. Thank you, Olivia. Um, we're so excited to be able to offer those trainings. Um, there are really great resources available on the PCAK website with those online trainings. Um, and we have even more resources available on our information and data center from educational videos to brochures, tip sheets. Um, we have free digital downloads, merchandise, all kinds of things are located on the information and data center. Um, and we have new and revised resources available right now, which we're really excited about. Um, I just wanna highlight a couple of them. Uh, we have the new home safety checklist, which is amazing. And we're really excited to have that available for you. Um, anywhere from bath safety to gun storage to um, medicine storage, um, it's preparing the parents and caregivers to have their, their homes safe for children. Um, so we're really excited to offer that new resource for you. We also have healthy development info cards, um, anywhere from birth to 18 years old. Um, and that just prepares, or I'm, I'm sorry, gives tips for parents and caregivers um, to support the healthy development of their children. Um, so we're really excited about that. We newly revised the Internet Safety Toolkit and our Child Sexual Abuse Risk Reduction Protocol Toolkit. Um, and those are available for download. They will also be available in trainings. Um, so please go check out our information and data center. It has a lot of information um, stored there, um, a lot of great resources available there for you. Um, of course, we also have pinwheels available on our information and data center um, because Child Abuse Prevention Month would not be the same without pinwheels. Um, the blue and silver pinwheel is the national symbol for child abuse and neglect prevention. Um, those are available for purchase, again, on our information and data center. Um, Prevent Child Abuse America holds the trademark res registration for the pinwheel, and they do ask that we do not equate pinwheels with victims or substantiation numbers. Um, we really want pinwheels to be a beacon of hope in the community. We want them to represent that prevention does work and that we are making a difference, strengthening families and children across the state. Um, so instead, we really ask that you equate pinwheels with positive imagery, um, like the number of families your organization has served, live births in your county, anything like that. I know when PCAK does our planting at the Capitol, we typically will equate those pinwheels with live births across Kentucky. Um, so again, please do not equate pinwheels with the victims or substantiation numbers. We really want those to be a beacon of hope in the community. 
Um, as Dom said, we have uh, Pinwillow Pell pins available for purchase on our information and data center. Um, they are perfect for Zoom calls. Um, the General Assembly is in session right now, so those are great for dis dis distributing to elected officials, um, to <laughs> friends and family. Um, they come in packs of 10, so you can keep one for yourself so that you can wear those on your Zoom calls um, and then distribute to coworkers, friends, families, um, anything like that. Um, so we also offer other promotional materials uh, can be found in our information and data center. Um, we have temporary tattoos, wear blue day stickers, um, encouraging magnets, bookmarks, and so much more. Um, but again, these pinwheel lapel pins right now in the era of Zoom um, are really great for that because you see from the chest up. Um, so those are great conversation starters for you. Um, we'll also, speaking of Zoom, be offering Zoom backgrounds this April, um, hopefully available for download late February, early March. Um, this is an example of what one may look like. We'll also have one specific for Wear Blue Day. So if you're trying to show your support on Wear Blue Day, wearing blue, you'll have a blue background, a blue shirt, blue jeans. You'll be decked out in blue showing your support for uh, child abuse prevention. Um, so we're really excited to offer that this year um, in this virtual era that we are living in right now. Um, and speaking of going virtual, um, we are really excited to launch our new website, um, hopefully in the next coming month. Um, we are so excited. It's going to give it a little bit more of like a modern update. Um, if you're familiar with our current website, all of the same information that we have housed on our current website is going to be in the same place on our new website. Um, so it should be really easy for you to navigate. There shouldn't be any um, issues with that. Um, it's just a clean transfer. It's just going to have a fresh new look. And we are so excited to have this available for you, hopefully in the next coming month. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jana so she can talk about our partnership with the Child Victims Trust Fund. Good morning. We were very fortunate to receive funding from the Child Victims Trust Fund last year to conduct a statewide survey just to gather the awareness level that not only professionals, but parents and everyday citizens have on child sexual abuse prevention. And it was striking to us that 25% of those respondents did not understand um, or know how to identify grooming behaviors of perpetrators. So we decided to focus our efforts this year, again, thanks to funding from the trust fund on making sure we can get that education out there to communities. We are going to use, you will see this little tagline in blue at the bottom right of your screen that says, are they good for your kids? So the idea will be to have cartoon imagery of an adult and a child interacting with that phrase. And we want people to use a QR code that is going to be on all of these images that they will divert them to our website, where they will not only get information on understanding grooming, but understanding healthy child sexual development, choosing safe caregivers, um, and everything that encompasses child sexual abuse prevention. So we are very excited about that. They are going to be featured on signage. So there will be ads that will be in Northern Kentucky, uh, Lexington and Louisville on city buses. And then we will also have social media campaigns, digital ads, and info cards. So we will provide information as we get closer to April, but we would love for our partners or anyone that is interested to participate in this. We can, um, if you will, if you're not a PCAK partner in prevention or don't know if you are on our listserv to receive this information, feel free, any of the email addresses that you've been provided, reach out to us so we can make sure to get you um, this information. So. The messaging, are they good for your kids, will direct general audience, parents, caregivers, professionals to our website to find that um, education in greater detail. The second piece of uh, funding from the Child Victims Trust Fund will encompass a training uh, featuring healthy child sexual development and how that knowledge and awareness can prevent child maltreatment. So be on the lookout for more information regarding that training. It may be that we have a limited number of uh, slots for that training, but we are working to ensure we can get that education out beyond April and throughout the years to come. So again, be on the lookout for that. And I would encourage you, if you are not on our partner list and want to become a partner, 
or if you don't receive any of the information um, from our email listserv, just let us know and we can get you signed up. Thanks, Jana. Um, our national office, Prevent Child Abuse America, will be launching a national pinwheel map um, their plan is to have that unveiled in late March. So we're not at this point at, at liberty to, to share a lot of details about it because it's kind of evolving right now. But uh, Emily and I did kind of see an advanced version of it and it looks awesome. And our national office and therefore all of, all of the chapters think that it it's going to be a good way to engage the chapters as well as the partners of each chapter. So we will be directing folks to this national pinwheel map where you can plant pinwheels on this national map. Um, so for those of you who, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, choose to, to not purchase the actual physical pinwheels, <clears throat> This national map we're hoping will be a good alternative to show support, not only nationally, but our, our hope is that Kentucky comes shining through and that our state is, um, you know, far exceeds the other states in terms of folks logging on and planting those pinwheels. So as we get additional information, we will certainly share it, but we just kind of wanted to give everybody a heads up that there will be this national map. We'll be directing folks to that map and everyone will have an opportunity to plant pinwheels um, either in honor of or in memory of folks. And as I understand it, they are also working on being able to allow like mass planting. So for uh, sororities, fraternities, uh, big organizations who might typically buy thousands of pinwheels from us, we'll be directing them to this national uh, pinwheel map. Thank you, Jill. What a great resource from PCA America. Um, we're so excited to be a part of that. Um, and we really think that this year, uh, that virtual map will be key to a successful uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month campaign. Um, and engaging the media is also key to a successful Child Abuse Prevention Month campaign. Um, and at Prevent Child Abuse Kentucky, we are very fortunate to have strong partnerships with the Kentucky Broadcasters Association and the Kentucky Press Association. Um, so we will be sending out press packets to both of them in March just to lay the ground floor um, and say that April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Here are key topics that we want to focus on throughout the month. Um, so we're really excited about that and really excited to engage the media in that way. Um, if you are working on engaging the media in your own organization, um, just a few tips for you as you move forward. Um, I encourage you to stay on message um, and always relate your message back to prevention and solution that works. Um, we really want to share stories, programs, and impact statements that show that prevention works. And again, highlight that we are a beacon of hope in this community um, and that prevention does work. Um, if you need tips on what to say, I highly encourage you to check out our Reinventing Our Messaging Toolkit online. Um, that is available for digital download. Uh, we also have, if you go to our Information and Data Center tab if, and click on Educational Videos, um, you will also see a webinar there for Reinventing Our Messages. Um, and again, that's just a way for um, you to uh, reinvent your messages so that you're focusing on positive imagery um, to inspire community members for action. Um, and again, that toolkit has sample press releases. It has letters to the editor, um, social media posts. I mean, it's a really great resource for you, um, even if it's just a starting block of where you, where you wanna go. So that's a great resource available for you on our website as well. Um, and speaking- just to mention as well, uh, the Reinventing Our Message is also a training that we offer as well. Yes, it is. Thank you, Dom. Um, 
So, and speaking of engaging the media, um, we this year really want to highlight our strong partner network with the media. Prevent Child Abuse Kentucky, um, as has been mentioned, has 238 partners across the state. Um, and we know that there's strength in numbers because we really wouldn't be able to permeate all 120 counties um, without all of their support and help. Um, so we're really thankful for that. And we really want to showcase that this year, um, not only in our Wear Blue Day efforts, but we want to showcase that to the media as well. Um, so we plan to issue a joint letter to the editor or press release with our partners this April to show a united front in our efforts to prevent child abuse and neglect. Um, so we're really excited about that. If you are interested in um, joining that uh, initiative, please email us at PCAKY at PCAKY.org. Um, if you are in our partner email list, you will also be receiving updates on that periodically as well leading up to April. Um, so we're really excited about this. Um, and we hope that we can highlight our partners in this way. So we just want to have a discussion now um, of how PCAK can support you throughout Child Abuse Prevention Month. Find out a little bit about what you need from us. Um, we'll answer some questions as well. But first, um, we have received comments about the environmental impact of pinwheels. Um, and we recycle, but we know that that's not a perfect solution. Um, so we're just wondering if anyone has any suggestions or ideas to promote pinwheels while remaining environmentally conscious. Hey, em Emily, be before folks jump in with that, um, I just want to go back to the partner letter and just elaborate on that a little bit more. So uh, our thought is that I would draft a letter um, so everyone would know what the letter says, and then we would be asking folks to um, probably through a, a Google form to sign on to the letter, and then we would distribute that letter um, through our networks through the uh, Kentucky Press Association. So the uh, Press Association their memberships are all the weekly and daily newspapers in the state. So um, I, I, to be honest with you, I have not yet begun to draft it, but I will. And uh, so just kind of stay tuned for that. Our, our thought is that what a, a resounding message that would be if we can get this letter in all or some or most of our newspapers signed on by, you know, hundreds of our partners. So uh, we, we just hope that when the letter comes out that it will be of, of a nature that you or your agency feel comfortable signing on to. So, okay, so back to the environmentally conscious. Does, does anybody have any ideas or have you seen anybody in your community um, you know, do something creative with the pinwheels that would allow for, you know, recycling or, or uh, be being more environmentally conscious. We, we usually collect the pinwheels and for the ones that can be uh, used again, we save them and use them, use them again the second year. Great, great luck. I think a lot of folks do that. So, and we encourage everyone to do that. So thank you. If anybody else has any ideas, you know, if you could put them in the chat box or uh, just send me or Emily an email, I'll put our emails in, in the chat box. So we just wanted you to know, we, we understand that it is an issue and we are doing our best to, um, as Lark said, recycle and, and use again. So, thank you. So how can PCAK support you this Child Abuse Prevention Month? What do you need from us um, as we move forward? Mm -hmm. 
So there were a couple of questions in the chat box about how to purchase the home kits and they are not yet on the website, but when we um, can't promise that it will be today, but um, either today or, or shortly, those home kits will be posted on our website front and center on the home page. So you don't have to search around for a lot of them. And um, so we, we want to make sure that that's as easy as possible for everybody. There's another question about face masks. We, we have a few face masks right now. We, we didn't plan on ordering more, but if that is something that our partners need and want and would use, again, if you could let us know, and then we'll, we'll see what might be involved in place in another order. Olivia or Jana, there were a couple of questions about CEUs for the trainings. So could you jump in and just let everybody know where we stand on that? Sure. Um, I believe I saw there was a question about um, providing um, credit or a CEU for early childhood. And that is for an online module. Um, I will definitely look into that with ECE Tris. Um, it's not as quick as getting approved as if we're doing a face-to-face -face or a virtual. So I made note of that immediately because I was excited when I saw that child care um, was interested in receiving credit and getting that in your facility. So that is a top priority for me. So I will reach out to my connections at ECE Tris and look at the process to get um, some CEUs for that for that field. As far as taking ITK, you can receive a general certificate and you will receive a social work if you, if you need that. And we asked that question at the end. Um, <clears throat> actually, we asked you that question in the first module so we know if you do need CEUs, but once you complete all three with a passing a score, um, you will receive your certificate. Um, so yes. I will look into the early childhood piece. Also, our trainings um, to be premiered in April, thanks to WellCare, um, we will try to apply to see if we can get most of those covered through early child care training credits when applicable. So our live or virtual, <laughs> not person trainings, we'll see what we can do about those as well. Other questions or any other ways that we can help you, things that you feel like maybe we've missed the boat on, things that you wish that we would do that we haven't talked about? I never know how long to wait before people like, okay, this is a, this is an awkward pause. So um, we want folks to be involved and we want to make it as easy as possible for each of you, either if, if you're on here just as an individual who's interested, or if you are an agency, we want to make this as easy as possible. We know that there is so much going on right now that uh, you, you do not need another thing on your to-do plate. So we want your involvement to be fun and easy. We want you to be able to not only involve your own family, especially uh, when Don was talking about the scavenger hunt, but this is for those of you who might be service providers we are also hoping that this is a way that you can involve those families that you serve in a way that might be non-threatening and uh, fun for them. And who knows, you know, they, they might get a gift card also. So, um, you know, Emily posted our email addresses when we, um, 
So since you signed up for the call, Emily, am I correct in saying we've got everybody's contact information? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so we will make sure that we send a summary of, of sorts out to everyone so that you don't have to keep track of everything. Um, but just know that feel free to email us or call us or um, um, you know send, send us smoke signals in any way that you can to, to let us know what you need. We are more than happy to do that. Yep, Lark. Uh, we are always looking for new and creative ways or activities to have, especially uh, in April. It, has there ever been a uh, any kind of comprehensive comprehensive list or summary of what has what other uh, prevent child abuse councils have done throughout the state? Uh, I'm a firm believer in learning learning from others. Yeah, Lark, we. Um... This goes back to our rabbit ears conversation. Uh, you and I have been around long enough to know that this type of call that we had had in past years, um, we've kind of toyed around with it a little bit. And sometimes we have asked some of our partners to present on this call so that they can share with everyone kind of what has worked in their area. I think Emily would be able to pull together a list of Kind of what has been happening in our state as well as maybe some ideas from other states and we're more than happy to send that out to everybody. Great, thank you. And I draw your attention to a great comment that Carrie put in the chat box where she talks about um, putting pinwheels in your gardens to keep the birds and the critters away. So that is a, a great idea. Jill, this is a, this is a little pinwheel that we had, we had cupcakes made last year to uh, distribute to, uh, to the, our fiscal court judge and the county commissioners when they proclaimed April to be child abuse and neglect prevention awareness month in Union County. And that turned out to be uh, pretty popular with the fiscal court. And we also had enough for the local DCBS staff to, uh, to get one as well. But it's just a little pinwheel that we had put in the individual cupcakes. So just oh. something different. I love that. That's great. Thank you. We've got about 10 more minutes. Does anybody else have any um, events or anything that they've done in the past that they'd like to share? Lynn, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know that Family Enrichment Center has done some great things. Um, you're, you're on mute, so I will know if I have put you on the spot, you will not unmute and you will not say anything. <laughs> No, I'm happy to, to jump in. Um, yeah, we, we've we been participating in this for many, many years. Um, the, um, in the, I've been there 13 years. And so we've started um, then trying to be creative and think of different things that hadn't been done. So I had found information about the Wear Blue Day and then, um, we have tried really hard and and I've really enjoyed the ones that we've been able to do to engage the faith community and uh, deliver um, all the items they need for Blue Sunday. Um, we've we've done um, around our square. We've gotten all the businesses around our square to acknowledge in all their windows in their stores they will do blue for the month of april um the justice center turns their fountain blue for for the april and it lasts through the spring but um so we're fortunate we have a really good relationship with the dcbs so they help us do all of our proclamations in our 10 counties um so we just try to 
engage and we do a lot with media. We have a lot of media interviews, a lot of media coverage that month. So even if what you do is small, if you have the media there, it makes it makes a big difference. A lot more people um, are aware. So thanks for calling me out, Jill. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Lynn. I'm, I'm getting ready to call somebody else out too. Um, with uh, St. Joe in London, who all are terrific partners. And um, if if you don't mind saying a few words, just because I know that your partnership may be a little different than others and uh, kind of represents maybe how some folks could get involved with their um, hospitals in their communities. So we do provide services through the hospital and very involved in the community. So some of the things we have done in the past, we go into the schools pre-COVID. Let's talk about pre-COVID. <laughs> we go into the schools, provide education. All of those children receive pinwheels, awareness information, all of the PCAK flyers. Um, and then we also have done art projects, um, little statements. My favorite thing to do with my family is, and we've, we've put those up at the hospital or somewhere in the community. We've painted rocks. We um, hosted um, an Easter egg hunt at the hospital every year until last year. And in 2019, we had over 600 people attend and 38 community partners. Um, it, it was fabulous. It's grown so much more than we ever could have imagined. We do a lot of uh, media posts in the hospital. We have tried to cover um, duty to report and really um, do a nurse specific, medical field specific duty to report. Um, we post um, information throughout the hospital. We last year due to COVID restraints, we had Easter baskets. Our hospital always does Easter baskets and in those baskets we put pinwheels and we put it is an Easter basket and it's full of candy and toys, but we also add that child abuse awareness um, information into it. Um, and then we had the Easter Bunny deliver those front porch safely following all of the COVID regulations. Um, that's what we did last year. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and try to do again this year. Um, I feel like it's the safest way to still get the message out, but still give our kids um, Easter with and it falls so closely to our April events. We do large pictures with hospital staff prior, um, social distancing for Wear Blue Day. We had branched into another county to do a block party, but that was canceled last year for COVID. And we do ribbons downtown and Laurel and Knox County for um, Child Abuse Awareness Month and the ribbons stay up the whole month of April. Jerry, am I missing anything there? We keep growing sure. every year, so sometimes I forget. <laughs> that, that's a lot. Thanks so much for sharing. We appreciate it. And if I could also draw it, your attention to uh, Kelly Dock, who is one of our board members, she posted in the chat box that at Norton's, they have a giant whiteboard in the hospital lobby and they ask employees to write one thing on the board that and to do to prevent child abuse. So Kelly, anything else you want to say about that? Pardon me. No, it just, you know, it's inexpensive and it's a way for each individual to truly think of one step that they can take to commit to prevention. So um, it was just really, I mean, it was a giant whiteboard and, you know, not necessarily that it has to be giant, but it just really made a statement in the lobby and challenged, you know, everyone who stepped into that space to acknowledge prevention and then also you know, make that commitment to a tangible thing that they plan to do. So whether that's help my sister and watch her kids twice in the next month, or, you know, um, and, and you could even change that messaging if you wanted to like um, strengthening families. How am I going to help strengthen families in my community this month? Um, I think there's a lot of different uh, questions you could ask people to answer that would fall in line nicely with child abuse prevention but inexpensive and, you know, Sharpie markers and the whiteboard and you're good. So just an idea. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, well, before we close, one thing that we did not mention is proclamations. 
especially with the physical distancing right now, your elected officials will still want to be on social media, will still want to have their uh, photos out there, will still want to have some uh, press coverage. So we encourage you on whatever level, it could be a proclamation uh, issued by your mayor, your judge executive, we will be submitting our proclamation request to the governor. And, and typically what we see then is whoever is the issuer of that proclamation will want to uh, post that on social media. And even though there may not be a big crowd, if you or maybe a couple of other folks, physical distance could also have your photo taken with the person who's issuing the proclamation, that's a great way to get some pretty easy publicity for your uh, child abuse prevention efforts. Okay, so I've got a 1057. So let me see, we've got one other question. Um, oh, Maggie, do you want do you want to talk about that real quick? I can. Um, so because I work with middle and high school students, we talk a lot about who our kiddos trusted adults are. Um, if something makes them uncomfortable, if they have an interaction that's inappropriate, who they can go to. And so last year we were learning virtually during April. So we um, encourage students to submit videos of who their trusted adult is and why, because so often their teachers, their coaches, their school administrators, um, you know, in addition to parents, family members. And we had t-shirts made up for the students that submitted that say, I have a trusted adult and had our school logo and our mascot. And we also gave t-shirts to the trusted adults that said, I am a trusted adult. So anyone who was named in the video um, got one. And it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a little crazy. We did a lot of porch deliveries of t-shirts, but had good student participation. Um, I told them they could dance, make it a TikTok, whatever they wanted. And they really um, had a lot of fun. So we hope to try to do something similar this year because it was a, a good response for a virtual program. That's great. Thanks, Maggie. And Lark, thanks for asking the question to, to kind of kick off everything. So we will wind down and say thank you to okay. joining us today and uh, stay tuned for more. We will, like I said, we will send a summary of the meeting. I don't, I don't really know what to, a meeting, phone call, um, our time together, we will send that out to you with all the links and the emails and all the resources. And we hope to stay connected with you as we continue our planning and work towards a great child abuse prevention month. Thanks so much and have a great rest of the day. Bye everybody.